SpaceX has made something once thought nearly impossible, landing rockets vertically, seem almost routine. While the concept of vertical rocket landings predates SpaceX and has a long history, it's Elon Musk's company that has truly perfected the technique and maintains a significant lead over the competition. But did you know that China is now exploring a third option for rocket stage recovery? Instead of vertical landings or winged space planes, a Beijing-based startup called Nayuta Space is proposing a horizontal landing method that uses a combination of aerodynamic surfaces and propulsion without wings. To be fair, this is probably the weirdest and wildest booster landing method we've ever seen. Founded in 2020 and led by CEO Li Rui, Nayuta Space remains relatively unknown compared to China's more prominent commercial space players like Landspace, Galactic Energy, CA Space, Space Pioneer, and iSpace. However, the company gained attention last year with a bold plan to recover its rocket stages using a system reminiscent of SpaceX's Mechazilla, albeit on a smaller scale. The proposed launcher, called Xuanyao R, or Blackbird R in English, is an ambitious two-stage vehicle designed to stand 70 meters tall with a 3.8 meter core diameter and a 5.2 meter fairing. Fully fueled, it would weigh around 480,000 kilograms and run on liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The first stage is expected to be powered by nine Kanglong-1 methane engines, each producing 70 tons of thrust, while the second stage would use a single CL2 vacuum engine. What makes the Blackbird R particularly interesting is its plan to use the rocket's own aerodynamic control surfaces to achieve a high angle of attack glide during re-entry, thus facilitating the stage's return to Earth. Previously, the company was planning to catch its boosters using a recovery tower, kind of like SpaceX's Mechazilla. Of course, they don't call it Mechazilla. Nayuta named their version the Eagle Grab. The idea was to catch the booster as it came back down through the atmosphere, eliminating the need for landing legs and making the rocket more mass efficient. But like I said, they've since changed direction and are now going with a horizontal landing method instead. This new approach still uses aerodynamic surfaces to glide the stage back during re-entry. But in the final phase, the booster lands horizontally on the ground using six thrusters. It's a bit like Starship's belly flop, but in reverse. Nayuta calls this new technique ADHL, which stands for Aerodynamic Deceleration Horizontal Landing. According to the company, during the glide phase, the stage slows down from over 3,000 kilometers per hour to about 936 kilometers per hour or 586 miles per hour before firing the landing thrusters to touchdown. Just like the Eagle Grab concept, this approach avoids heavy landing gear like what Falcon 9 uses, though some kind of structural support will still be needed to safely rest the rocket on the ground. At the same time, ADHL cuts down on propellant use and reduces wear on the engines. Nayuta even claims it keeps payload loss to just 1%, which is impressive for a reusable system. The rocket itself, the Zhuanyao R, is meant to support a wide range of missions, from commercial satellite launches to suborbital experiments and even space tourism. Right now, Qianyi Aerospace, which is working on the rocket with Nayuta, has finished the overall design of the vehicle and the ADHL system. The architecture has already passed a review by a panel of industry experts, and the team is now diving into detailed design work. They're aiming to move into the engineering development phase by early 2026 with the first orbital flight and recovery attempt scheduled for late 2026. But the Nayuta team hasn't stopped there. They've actually proposed using their ADHL technology for landings on other worlds, like the moon. That, however, doesn't really make much sense for two big reasons. First, the moon has no atmosphere, so aerodynamic surfaces are completely useless. And second, you can't exactly send a first stage booster to the moon. At that point, it's not a booster anymore. It's a spacecraft, more like SpaceX's HLS lunar lander than anything resembling a launch vehicle stage. That said, Nayuta's ADHL system is still an interesting hybrid. It combines the high angle of attack re-entry technique seen in Starship's Super Heavy with the glide and landing maneuvers used by Starship's second stage. 
On paper, it sounds straightforward, but in practice, it's anything but. Returning a stage at high angles of attack is extremely challenging. SpaceX found that out during the Starship IFT-9 mission when Booster 14 was destroyed during descent. The structure couldn't handle the aerodynamic loads generated at such a steep angle. And that's just one part of the problem. There's also the transition maneuver between vertical and horizontal flight, which adds even more structural stress. Of course, Nayuta Zhuanyaar's first stage is going to be much smaller than Super Heavy, so it won't face the same exact loads, but the challenges remain, especially when you factor in the six small landing thrusters required for final touchdown. These introduce a whole new set of technical and financial hurdles. You're now talking about building a reliable, lightweight propulsion system separate from the main engines. That means extra tanks, similar to Starship's header tanks, to ensure propellant is available regardless of the rocket's orientation. And that means added dry mass, which directly hurts performance. On top of that, the planned placement of the thrusters, top, middle, and bottom of the stage, creates complex plumbing challenges unless they go with dedicated landing tanks for each pair. Even then, there's very little margin for error. If just one thruster fails, the whole booster could end up landing hard, or not at all. Despite potential technical challenges, the operational benefits of ADHL are highly compelling. The maneuver is unquestionably feasible from a physical standpoint. If successfully implemented, ADHL could significantly reduce recovery fuel requirements and extend main engine service life by minimizing ignition cycles. Additionally, the horizontal landing approach removes reliance on specialized recovery hardware or the precise positioning required for tower-based catch systems. Honestly, making a fully reusable rocket is no easy task. When Elon Musk commented on the soon you r concept, he noted that building a fully reusable orbital rocket, regardless of design, is one of the hardest engineering challenges of all time. Much, much harder than going to the moon, Musk said, which is why it still hasn't been solved. Despite the difficulty, he also expressed optimism, saying that he still believes Starship could achieve full reusability as soon as next year. China has some fascinating reusable rocket concepts in development, and commercial aerospace companies there are planning at least three Starship-style vehicles. The first is YQ-1, a reusable liquid-fueled launch vehicle developed by the private company Dahang Yijian. Inspired by SpaceX's Starship and its chopstick clamp tower recovery method, YQ-1 is the first Chinese rocket to adopt a similar recovery approach. It features a two-stage design, stands around 70 meters tall, has a body diameter of 4.2 meters, a fairing diameter between 4.2 and 5.2 meters, and a liftoff mass of approximately 554 tons. The first stage is powered by nine YF-209 liquid oxygen methane engines, each generating about 80 tons of thrust. The second stage uses a vacuum-optimized YF-209V engine. Its payload capacity to low Earth orbit ranges from 12 tons in recovery mode to 18 tons in expendable mode. Instead of traditional landing legs, YQ-1 employs a robotic arm cap capture system integrated into a launch tower, relying on ground capture plus intelligent control for recovery and reuse. Initial testing is slated for November 2024, with full orbital launch and first stage recovery targeted for 2026. Another entry is the AS-1, being developed by Yushi Space Corporation. Also targeting a 2026 maiden flight, AS-1 mirrors Starship's scale and design philosophy. It's a two-stage, 70-meter-tall rocket with a diameter of 4.2 meters and a liftoff mass of 570 tons. The first stage is powered by nine Longyun liquid oxygen methane engines. Its projected payload capacity to low Earth orbit ranges from 10 tons reusable to 15.7 tons expendable. Chinese rocket startup Space Epoch, also known as SEPOC, recently made headlines with a successful demonstration flight of its reusable Yangtze-1 rocket booster. The test took place at the Oriental Spaceport in Shandong Province and lasted 125 seconds. During the flight, the Yangtze-1 booster reached an apogee of 2.5 kilometers, then executed a controlled descent. After reigniting its engines, it performed a soft ocean landing. Although the booster eventually sank, the mission was considered a success as it demonstrated key flight capabilities, full engine thrust, variable thrust control, engine shutdown and restart, as well as free descent, glide, and hover phases ahead of landing. The rocket features an innovative design utilizing a lightweight, thin-walled aluminum and stainless steel structure powered by liquid oxygen and methane. 
The tested booster is 4.2 meters in diameter and 26.8 meters tall, wider but shorter than SpaceX's Falcon 9 first stage, which is 3.7 meters in diameter and 41 meters tall. The booster was built in collaboration with Zhenyuan Technology. Based in Beijing, Space Epoch is part of a new wave of ambitious Chinese aerospace startups, including Landspace, iSpace, and Galactic Energy. Notably, Landspace reached orbit in July 2023 and successfully recovered a booster during a Zhukou 3 test on January 19, 2024. Space Epoch aims to reach orbit with its Yangtze rocket later this year. This surge in commercial activity comes as China continues to make major strides in space. It recently completed its first asteroid sample return mission, maintains a permanent crewed presence aboard the Chang'e Space Station, and plans to launch the Zhontian Space Telescope, a Hubble-class observatory that will co-orbit with Chang'e in 2026. Looking ahead, China's Tianwen-3 mission, scheduled for 2028, could potentially achieve the world's first Mars sample return. Today's global launch schedule increasingly falls into three categories, China, SpaceX, and everyone else. Over the past five years, China's ambitions for reusable launch systems have accelerated, powered by a combination of state-owned enterprises and a growing cohort of private space firms. This evolution marks more than just technological advancement. It reflects a strategic shift. Beijing is rapidly expanding its domestic launch capacity while building a resilient, cost-efficient logistics backbone designed to support both commercial and military objectives in space. Reusable rockets offer two key advantages, lower launch costs and higher mission frequency. These enable the rapid deployment of satellite constellations and fundamentally change the economics of access to orbit. China is beginning to mirror this transformation. Private companies are integrating with state-run infrastructure like the Tiangong Space Station, accelerating the fusion of commercial innovation with national space priorities. While China's momentum is undeniable, it still trails the United States, especially SpaceX, which dominates global launch volume and has set the standard for reusable systems. Chinese firms remain in prototype stages, and achieving reusability involves far more than just booster recovery. Ground operations, manufacturing efficiencies, refurbishment cycles, and data-driven cost analysis are all essential, and areas where SpaceX holds a deep institutional edge. China's space sector also faces unique challenges. Regulatory oversight remains tight, commercial actors are closely tied to state policy, and the industrial ecosystem is still maturing. Meanwhile, SpaceX benefits from a strong global customer base. While China's commercial launches rely heavily on domestic or state-sponsored contracts. Yet, Beijing's potential to close the gap should not be underestimated. Technology transfer between civilian and military programs, partnerships with the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, and military civil fusion initiatives create a potent, vertically integrated ecosystem for innovation. With reusable rockets, Chinese firms will be positioned to launch satellite constellations more quickly and affordably, reshaping global communications and connectivity. One major effort, Guang, a planned constellation of 13,000 low-Earth orbit satellites, aims to provide broadband coverage across China and much of the global south. Such capabilities carry profound implications, not only for the commercial satellite market, but also for military readiness and geopolitical influence. Reusable systems will also underpin long-term strategic projects like the proposed International Lunar Research Station with Russia, where scalable, cost-effective launch capacity will be essential.